You're a figment of my imagination. Really? Is this a figment of your imagination? <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 13 of No Late Fees. Today, Leo and I are back as always, and we're going to talk about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which is the long-awaited sequel to the 1988 cult classic, Beetlejuice. You just said his name three times. Is it going to appear now? See, how does that whole thing work? If I say Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and then I wait a couple hours, you know, maybe tomorrow morning, and I say Beetlejuice, does it work? Or is it like a sleep thing? Do I sleep it off and then it resets? Or is there a time limit? How the f*** does that work? <laughs> I feel like they give you a generous, like, eh, 20 minutes in between each one. Just give, make sure you made that decision in, in full cognition. I think that that needed to be in the book for the recently deceased. <laughs> That's like a rule. Somewhere on his flyer. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a pronunciation guide, so it's not Beetle Jiswazi. Yeah, Beetle Guise, Beetle Juice, Beetle Guisazi. We have Tim Burton back again to direct, and I think he did a fantastic job at capturing the aesthetic, the vibe, the feel of the original. You have movies uh, nowadays when they do sequels that are made after a long period of time. They kind of modernize it, and they could you know, use too much CG and kind of doesn't really capture the feel. But this movie, it definitely captured the feel aesthetic-wise. And the practical effects, the, the claymation, the late 80s style, it makes the movie feel like it fit right in in that universe seamlessly. Very. It's it's the Burtonness of it all. Tim Burton, as everybody knows, has his own very kind of eclectic style, his own kind of way of rendering things, his own yeah. universe where everything kind of just meshes just because of how it's stylistically done. Like you said, just very seamlessly fits right into that universe and does not feel like a clunky sequel that is done 30 years later. I think for every Tim Burton movie, you know, you have Batman, Batman Returns, Nightmare Before Christmas, original Beetlejuice. Then on the other hand, you have Alice in Wonderland, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Dumbo. I feel like this one falls in the middle. I feel like it's it's somewhat a return to form. I, I feel like it's it would be uh I feel like it would be irresponsible to kind of think that he can get back to that form of like, you know, his 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 hits, his all time classics, like some of the movies we talked about. But I feel like it's definitely a step in the right direction of a movie like Dumbo. I don't know if you saw it. It was fucking awful. I did not see that one. <sighs> don't. It was awful. <laughs> Michael Keaton's back. Thank God. And Michael Keaton is definitely one of the, the shining aspects of this movie. He's eating up every scene he's in. He's hamming it up. He's hilarious. You can tell he seamlessly just falls right back into the role. And every time he is on the screen, he steals it. It's not something that I, I realized until seeing the movie, mostly because I've only seen the original twice, including today. Uh, <laughs> Which is kind of a sin, but I, I, won't, I won't go too hard on you. Beetlejuice is such a, uh, like a horror clown where he has his own agenda, but he goes about it in such a way. He just can't play it serious. He no, like, yeah. he he has a, he has a lot that he needs to accomplish, and he knows that he is just unable to take it in a serious manner. I feel like if you took Peter Vankman and Deadpool and mixed them to a character, you kind of <laughs> you would kind of get Beetlejuice. Like he he's your antagonist, but he's kind of a piece of shit. He's kind of creepy. He says irresponsible things, but he means well most of the time. He breaks the fourth wall. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. I think he's like Deadpool. I think if you were friends with him, he's the kind of person that if you brought him out in public or brought him out to like another group of friends, you'd have to apologize like seventeen times throughout the night. Like I, that's just that's Sorry, just Beetlejuice, that's, man. That's Sorry, just, that's just Gwazy over there. <laughs> The score in the movie is fucking fantastic. Oh, Danny Elfman, man. Let's Danny fucking Elfman go. Kills it, as always. The movie started, and the classic Beetlejuice soundtrack, I'm just sitting there going, da, da. <laughs> and, like, and, and no matter what, like the music was, was not even something that, it wasn't something that I noticed as like a no it's danny or, fucking yeah, elfman it, if if you know danny elfman you like danny elfman it's danny fucking it, elfman it, it that, hits like, every fucking note like, you need it to hit with yeah. different instruments a lot of ho, 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 a lot of that going on it just <laughs> yeah it's it's danny elfman it it was really fucking good yeah <laughs> so we're gonna get into some minor spoilers so no actually no we're gonna go right into it. we'll definitely get into some major spoilers <laughs> By minor spoilers, I mean, we're going to talk about the whole movie. So if you haven't seen the whole movie yet, 
go watch it and come back. So in my opinion, this movie, it kind of has the Dark Knight effect. And let me explain. I'm not trying to compare this movie to the scale of the Dark Knight, right? So hear me out. When you're watching the Dark Knight, you feel every gap that doesn't have Heath Ledger's Joker in it. You get a Heath Ledger Joker scene. You have to wait 15, 20 minutes for, for him to come back. He comes back. You feel it. He's gone again. He's not in a lot of the movie when you actually go back and watch it. But the only difference is this movie, you're waiting for every Michael Keaton scene. But this movie doesn't have the characters of Bruce Wayne or Batman or Commissioner Gordon or Lucius Fox to hold the movie up compared to The Dark Knight. I feel like Winona Ryder is back. Uh, we have Jenny Ortega. I feel like their characters don't hold the movie up as good as the, the, the Maitlands did in the original. I can agree with that. Um, when Beetlejuice isn't on screen, you're definitely waiting for him to get there. I guess in the same aspect with Heath Ledger's Joker, it's that anticipation of like, okay, when's he coming back? What's he doing next? The more of the anticipation, I guess, for me was, okay, where's Beetlejuice? When Oda Ryder's character, uh, it felt like they basically laid her out to be a doormat uh, yeah, for most of the movie. Jenna Ortega was supposed to be the new Lydia Dietz, but it didn't necessarily hit. She was the... a lot more plain than I expected her to be. Yeah, like it didn't hit the sad goth kid that Lydia Dietz hits. It was more of the whiny emo kid that. Yeah, whiny wham, emo mom, college wham, girl wham, who like... goes to protests and is a skeptic of her mom and the whole ghost thing and. That character, I feel like, could have been fleshed out slightly more than just wah, wah, wah. I don't even believe in ghosts. I can't believe everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like my that. mom's a hack. She's crazy. Also, now that I'm thinking about it and glad that I'm remembering it, where the hell was Ulfo? Dude, I don't know. Or like somebody sidekickery-wise so to have with... I I think I think his character. I don't remember if they actually said anything about him. I don't remember. I don't think that they no, did. I don't think they mentioned but him at I, all. His pain in the ass side character. I think was the manager slash love interest Fucking to Lydia Rory. in this one. Yeah, Rory. That was he Fucking was Rory. very paper thin. Uh, every time he was on screen, he was super annoying. Yes, he was supposed to be that. So yes, good good on the actor for for playing the character and obviously we were not supposed to like the character his character you knew from the get-go okay you're gonna dick her over when he did it wasn't a surprise because she was a doormat and just let it keep happening so it was like okay that's just what we're gonna do here so in the beginning it opens up with the same style where you see all the actors names which is very very similar to the ghostbusters font i randomly noticed this recently and i got a double check i'll put a picture side by side right here definitely but we not see, having ghostbusters on the mind <laughs> we see like the the sky view of, of the city and it does the model again of the house yep which i definitely appreciate because yeah now because now remember when i was a kid i didn't notice it but now i i know that they were models so i'm looking for it right. and i was able to spot it when you see like the lightning going off in the beginning but it looks fucking great man so that was definitely something that i tipped my hat to Nice fucking model! They all come together because there's a death in the family. Jeffrey Jones' character, who is not in this movie for reasons. We're going to gloss over that, though. If you want to look why, we won't you have Google. The reasons as to... <laughs> for rightful reasons, we'll just say that. He dies. They're all called back. They go to the original house. They go attend his funeral. Catherine O'Hare is there, who, again, like Michael Keaton, eats up every scene that she's in. You know, to be honest, I could have done with a little bit less of her. Maybe I just, I love Kevin McAllister's mom so much that I can just watch her all day. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> if anybody loves a good, Kevin! <laughs> it's me. It felt like this was a Moira from Schitt's Creek and less of Delia. Because in, in the original, she was a bitch who did art. In this one, she was huh, more of an artist. And uh, I'm also sometimes a bitch. But I feel like that kind of paid off her character, though, because at least it, it acknowledged that, you know, she was trying to do the art thing and the weird stuck up artist style of like personality she had. And it actually went places. Most of the time, artists and musicians and, you know, those actors, they can kind of be divas. And she kind of hams that up good enough. But I, I get what you're saying. I think it would have been interesting if they took a different route with it. So how there was a disconnect with them in the original. So we we meet her. And she's hosting like a, a, a TV show and she's a celebrity and she hosts a supernatural ghost show because she's famous from the 
the incidents from the original movie. But she's 55 or whatever she is, and she's still dressing like a goth girl. And Jenna Ortega With is kind of like... With the worst bangs in movie history. <laughs> I absolutely (laughs) hate bangs to begin with. It's an awful hairstyle if you have bangs. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just going to shit talk bangs for a second. What did you say yesterday? You said it looked like her head got bit by a shark. It looks like her (laughs) forehead was eaten by a shark. That it just went... This is this is supposed to be stylish, Tim Burton. We, we, we couldn't literally change anything about her. She's very skeptic about what her mom does on the show with the ghosts and the paranormal activity and everything that happened in the original. I think it would have been interesting if once we see her film, she, so the movie opens up and she's filming an episode of her show. If she walked off screen and kind of dropped the goth stuff and it was just a facade, she was just kind of keeping up the look that made her famous in this world as a celebrity. And she was just like a regular girl, like a regular dressed mom kind of thing. And it kind of made her like a a bitchy celebrity who kind of lost touch with the character she was in the original, kind of like how her mom, her stepmom was in the original. That kind of would have like tied them together a little bit. They're all coming back for the funeral and she's starting to see Beetlejuice again. How he was able to manifest himself into that much of the real world while still being trapped? Reasons. Mark. Reasons. Plot reasons. Just skip over that. <laughs> she has a love interest, like we said earlier, that's also her manager and is basically one of our, our minor villains in the movie. Can't keep track of who's a major and minor villain. It no, really... see, and that's that's another one of the problems with this movie. I feel like for what this movie should be, it's way too convoluted for its own good. There's a lot of characters. Every character has like their main plot. They have a love interest plot slash wedding plot. And those characters have subplots going on on their own. There's some characters that there's just I wanted to see more of like. So I like the fact that they actually told some of Beetlejuice's lore. So we see we see how he became Beetlejuice. One of the main antagonists from the movie, we meet Dolores, his wife. (laughs) I'm sorry. Did you just call her the main antagonist of this movie? (laughs) I said one of the main antagonists from this movie. I would not even consider her an antagonist of this movie. I would consider her a Scooby-Doo villain of this movie (laughs) who is just running around, going through open doors and chasing people and occasionally just getting her sucks off for no reason. I think she could have been interesting. I I feel like with this movie, there was... Did you notice it felt like there was two different scripts for this movie that kind of squashed together? So there was the, the plot of like Beetlejuice and his wife and her trying to get revenge on him and get the Beetlejuice. Then there's a storyline of what's going on with Jenna Ortega's love interest, the the boy that we meet shortly, and that whole conflict and the conflict with uh, William Defoe's character. There's like two different things that go on. So we get to see some lore from Beetlejuice when he was a grave robber. So he would steal the gold teeth and the belongings of people in graves, and that's where he he met Dolores. And she's like a, a fucking death cult uh, leader or something. Something of sorts. Yeah, they get married. I thought it was hilarious that on their wedding night, when they're going to bed, she's carrying him on on her shoulder <laughs> and slams him down. <laughs> they toast and it's poison. He drinks it. She doesn't. And as he's dying, he grabs an axe and fucking kills her. I mean, and that's from, how she has the her like her face and body's like cut into pieces, and don't she eventually some serious gets steep- chops though too from like how the the chunks of body had to form back together. It Maybe there just, was multiple swings that we didn't see uh, on screen. From the looks of it, it's it's very Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas with the like stitch kind of look, but yeah. it's very unlike that when it comes to the actual pieces. They were like hunky and chunky, and I think they did a good job when they um when they showed her like pieces like coming together, it was kind of like, um, uh, it was kind of like Adam's family esque with like things yeah, running around thing, yeah. and her body comes back together. She like staples her face back together and you think she's going to be the main antagonist, but then she's just kind of gone all for she, like huge chunks is, of the movie. All she does is kill Danny DeVito, which is just, like, Oh, that was all. Awesome. That but, was my, that, that cameo was fucking fantastic by yeah, the way. Yeah. So, it was. When we go into the the afterlife and you see that weird hallway that's like all like uneven, the checkered floors and stuff, we see this fat little short janitor guy, and you could tell by the voice it's fucking Danny DeVito. But I knew by sound- the back of the head it was yeah. DeVito. <laughs> it sounds I know like Frank Reynolds when I see him. <laughs> it sounds like Oswald Cobblepot from Batman Returns, though. Like he's his voice is very liquidy and 
gravelly. See, I love that you heard Oswald. I just heard Frank Reynolds gurgling a beer, just going. Oh. <laughs> I I think both are fair comparisons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then once he he he's there for five seconds, and obviously just a cameo. But then she's the first person that we see like she sucks the soul out of, and the body just kind of deflates <laughs> into like a a blow up toy that deflates and just falls to the ground. It almost looks like a chicken nugget, but not really. <laughs> We see her like she's looking for Beetlejuice the whole movie. She'll suck someone's soul trying to get closer to him. And then she's just kind of gone. We also meet another one of the the antagonists. We meet William Defoe's character, who's a dead actor, like an action star, who is now a detective in the underworld. And he hams it up when he's on screen. He's good when he's on screen. But I feel like, again, we didn't get a lot of him because there's so much screen time to go around. Like, in between waiting for Beetlejuice to come back, we're seeing Dolores, we're seeing William Defoe, Winona Ryder, and Jenna Ortega, and... There's not a lot of screen time to go around, and it tries to do too much where I feel like if they would have just focused on him or on her, it would have been executed a lot more efficiently. Lydia's daughter, Asterix, is away at school, and she gets called back to their hometown to go to the funeral. And when she's there, she goes on a bike ride and just crashes into a treehouse and meets her, her cheesy love interest for the rest of the movie. And I don't know about you, I saw it from a fucking mile away that something was off. Because when they meet and then they eventually go in the house and he's being very vague about his past, you'd never see the dad's face and you never see the mom's face. So something just felt off. I wouldn't have said he ended up being a murderer, like he murdered his his parents, but something was definitely off and I kind of saw it coming. If they needed a reason for Astrid to become a believer, they could have found something in the house. Have her see Beetlejuice. It's a very easy explanation. Put him in the fucking movie. Oh, shit, go surreal. And then that entire reason to have this kid is gone. I don't want to say it's the unnecessary ghost from Ghostbusters, but like it's the unnecessary ghost from Ghostbusters all over again. (laughs) It would have been a lot more interesting if they had her become a believer by seeing Beetlejuice and then Beetlejuice wanted to trade up to marry another Dietz, but marry the younger daughter. And then you kind of wipe the kid Jeremy completely out of the picture and the movie doesn't skip a beat. Once he gets established as having a shady past and he murdered his family, when his motivation gets revealed and he's trying to bait Jenny Ortega into switching spots with him so he can go back to the real world, Beetlejuice kills him and he's gone. Yeah, it just opens up a trap door to hell and that's that. Yeah, he's on like the final step of like getting this the 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 stamp to go back to the real world, and it ends up being Beetlejuice. He he stamps his passport, saying "What is a shit out of luck," yeah. and then pulls a lever, and he falls into hell. He's gone. We he, never see him again. So, what was the point of him? Because they needed a reason for her to go to the uh, the afterlife to see her father. If you think about it, that could have been Beetlejuice's main motivation. He said, "Listen, you're gonna marry me, so I can go back to the real world, and I'll show you your dad." He could have given her the exact same proposal that jeremy did and it would have worked fine and been less convoluted another subplot that didn't need to be there and the movie wouldn't have skipped a beat it would have been nice for lydia to have been seeing the dad instead of beetlejuice that way she has at least a reason to want to go to the afterlife and with the daughter being a non-believer let's go to the afterlife and and see your father because like we can go. I've been there before, blah, 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 whatever. I know how to open a door, go to the attic, read the book. I've done all this. So that- Yeah, just show her. Go to the fucking attic, draw a door, knock three times and show her. And again, like where was- And it's not like, it's not like she's not seeing the ghost currently as a 50 something year old adult because she's taking medication in the movie. It helps her because she still constantly sees paranormal activity. Correct. So all you had to do was like, okay, you don't, believe me we're at the house watch this draw the fucking door knock three times go to the afterlife there's your dad stop resenting me over his death grandma's been controlled by a ghost you would think grandma at one point would have been like yeah totally i was controlled by a ghost we had a dinner party it was fucking great we all danced around to harry belafonte like (laughs) what we don't have dinner parties like that anymore no this time we got the fucking cake in the rain I mean, I I knew that that scene was going to come or some kind of like play up to the next version of that, which was fine. It it was fine. It it did way too long. It hit all the necessary beats, I guess, if you like that. It hit the necessary beats in the first verse. And then by the like second or third, I was like, geez, somebody really did leave this fucking cake out in the rain because I've been sitting here waiting for this song to end. So now Dolores is still looking for him. 
uh, William Defoe is still looking for him, and he basically is going to force Lydia again to marry him, basically, so he can get out of there again, just like the original. Just like you said, they have the song dance scene. They're all in the church. First, Rory's there, and he's going to marry her because earlier on in the movie, he proposed to her at uh, her dad's funeral, which is, just shows that like, just goes. <laughs> okay, I yeah. guess I'm, I guess I'll marry you. <laughs> and by the way, the best character in the fucking movie, Bob, fucking Bob, dude, one of the 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 little office uh workers that Beetle just has a little head. He's fucking great. Every scene he's in, he makes me laugh my ass off. He's got a little "Hi, my name is Bob" sticker. He's wearing the Beetlejuice tuxedo. Beetlejuice scene... needed a uh, a scapegoat for if Dolores came looking for him, so yeah. Bob was the designated Beetlejuice escapee. Bob was loyal though. Never he said got, anything. He got interrogated by William Defoe and by Dolores. He didn't fucking say a word. Didn't say a word. And then that fucking boring bitch killed him. Sucked his soul. He turned into a little deflated and balloon, and now Bob's way. gone. No. Justice for Bob. Hashtag justice for Bob. Beetlejuice stops the wedding. He injects Rory with a truth serum. We find out that he's not marrying her for the love. He's trying to advance his career. Yada, yada, yada. He's wah, there for wah, the money. Wah, beep, boop, bop, yeah, wah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Get over so, yourself. Get yeah, Beetlejuice you. gets him out of the way. Now Rory's gone. Dolores shows up, and now she finally found Beetlejuice. And you're like, all right, here's this villain that's been here for two or three minutes throughout the whole entire runtime of the movie. He draws a door. Sandworm comes up. Rut rope. <laughs> Yoink. Beetlejuice does the matador with the red cape and lures the sandworm and eats her. She's gone. I will say it was nice to see the sandworm get a little bit more uh, screen time in this movie. Again, watching the, the original today, it was really only on screen for 0.5 seconds to be like, ah, it's a worm with a worm inside yeah. with another well, worm inside! Grr. That claymation animation was pushing the limits so hard in 88 that it probably oh, it took months. You don't Stop think so? It. No. Back in the, whatever year it was, all those uh, claymation Christmas movies. Oh, you know, those entire... were like the 1940s and the whole movie was done. You're right. Thank you're right. You. So like the, you're right. The, my bad. Pushing nothing. You could have put, you could have been pushing it. Not yeah, when did Christmas was an entire claymation. So when did fucking Rudolph come out? What fucking year was it? 1964. <laughs> 1964, that movie came out. So yes, I retract my statement. <laughs> I retract my statement. You're right. But they, they did give him more time to shine or it or whatever the fuck. It, it gave the, the, the sandworm more time to shine. They, them, worm. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like they they dialed back what they could have done and made it look more claymation, which is respected, and yeah. I, I I like that. William Defoe comes back and you know, oh, just right. says, and all this random dead cop ghosts. That yeah, are the fucking super after cops, Beetlejuice as well. He says freeze, they all freeze, and then that's really it. Beetlejuice contract was void for reasons I don't remember. So the wedding doesn't happen. He pops like a balloon, and that's really the end. That, that's really the end. What happens after that? Oh, oh, wait, you know what we forgot? What? We forgot about the soul train. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because... yeah, so so, so uh, Catherine O'Hara dies. She gets bitten by these two snakes that she has for, like, her art show that are supposedly defanged, and they end up both biting her on the neck, and she dies. She goes to the soul train. It, it's great. They, they, they did a really good job of, like, establishing the way the waiting room looked and the and the secretary and all that stuff. I very much enjoy and appreciate the Soul Train reference. Nobody loves a good actual Soul Train like me. I will hop on any Soul Train I'm, I'm put in front of. However, there was, for me, not enough Soul Trainery in the <laughs> station. Okay? There, there they was, were all dancing. There was, like, funk yes, music okay, playing. So they were yeah, dancing. Yeah, they were. But... A soul train or a soul train line, at least you have two lines and then everybody's like going down the middle of said line. But even like everybody's just like random soul dancing was not it was it was, so you're, it was, it was you're saying you wish the soul zombie, train was more organized, it was giving me zombie train vibes. And then all of a sudden they were like, all right, let's stand in the line and dance. <laughs> Why do I feel like there's something missing that we're not talking about? Oh, Scram, too. <laughs> after that we'll just fucking skip it we'll skip it for now so after that Beetlejuice is back to the afterlife we see Lydia is filming her show and she's gonna take a break to spend more time with her family and travel with her daughter she's fixing the relationship with her daughter 
and then oh that's what we forgot to talk about so we think everything is well and good and it oh, kind of does right. you know where i'm going you know where i'm going oh, oh, you know you know this, it shut up this fu- oh, so it does a fast forward does a fast forward where Astrid is getting is getting married she's she, starting she, a family where did she find this boy it, it just happened. In the, was he it just in the happened. church? It was he not that I recall. Not that I recall. It's not important. Move on. Town. Move along. Nope. Nope. I don't think so. Just move along. She's getting married. She's having a baby. And all of a sudden she gives birth. And it's that little fucking Beetlejuice baby who's just like biting everyone and killing people and crawling on the ceiling like exorcist style. And that was another thing. Bob and the little Beetlejuice baby are the best parts of this fucking movie. Earlier on in the movie... Beetlejuice makes Lydia's stomach just start blowing up and she gives birth to a little Beetlejuice fucking baby who's like gnawing at her leg and crawling around like a demented fucking demon spider. It's fantastic. Those scenes were a lot more gory than I expected. And then Astrid was not even like bothered by the fact that she just had a zombie baby explode out of her (laughs) hoo-ha. Just like baby daddy man is must not have been Beetlejuice because unless Beetlejuice took over baby daddy boy body and made Beetles seed. I <laughs> too many fucking questions. Little Beetlejuice. Well, here's the answer. Little Beetlejuice baby is running around the, the room, killing the doctors, killing the nurses, crawling on the ceiling. I was, and waiting, all this stuff. I was waiting for the run back inside. But then Lydia sits up. It's a dream. And she looks to her side, and Beetlejuice is there, and he says, like, what's up, babe? Or something like that. And then she wakes up again and sits up. The spot next to her is empty. Black screen credits. Leonardo so, DiCaprio shows up and spins his little dreidel, and then all of a sudden it's beetlejuice all over again. Did you notice? It would have been funny if she woke up. So the movie ends, and there's no after credit scene. There's no mid- mid-credit scene. It would have been funny if she sat up the second time waking up from the dream within the dream and Brad Pitt was next to her. Because did you notice on the executive producers list in the beginning, Brad there, Pitt yeah. was an executive producer? So imagine if she just woke up next to Brad Pitt for reasons and the movie ended. Imagine <laughs> that Brad, I like, I, I want Brad Pitt to have been one of the Bobs, just like silently, and just one of when they all kind of explode out of the attic and it's just like a parade of bobs down the, <laughs> the, the front of the house. Like, I wanted one of those to be Brad Pitt. Yeah. Bob Pitt. <laughs> but yeah, the the movie was fine. I, I feel like it didn't do anything to offend me or piss me off, but it also, I think I'm going to forget about it in a week. The certain things it did well, it did extremely well as far as Michael Keaton's performance, Catherine O'Hara's performance, bringing back a lot of the characters that they were able to for reasons. And I feel like they nailed the humor. They did some good things. But then the movie just is kind of a blob of a mess where it should have been dialed down. It's a Beetlejuice movie. It doesn't have to be super complex. There's a, a handful of things you take away from the movie and the movie would work just as well and be shorter. And you would have less time in between Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice. And I feel like the movie would have been more coherent and a straight line versus an A to D to B to C back to A to E to B to F. And next thing you know, it's like, I just want to go from A to B to C. But you're doing all these unnecessary forks in the road to get to the climax. And the movie was very slow for the first like two acts. And then it did hit. But then everything was was resolved super quickly and the payoffs weren't as good as they should have been. I feel like a lot of movies are doing this nowadays where they're adding a whole lot of extra shit that doesn't need to be there. Frozen Empire, the whole firebender shit, like could have done without all of it. Like yep. they, they just are throwing extra stuff in there to have extra people in to do things. Uh, Willem Dafoe was... a great addition to it but his character was unnecessary that should have been dolores she should have gone and taken over the afterlife police force to then go and search for beetlejuice and make her a more relevant character as opposed to oh yes keep it real and let's go (sighs) if you're gonna get william defoe there get him longer than a weekend because it feels it, it felt like all of his scenes were filmed in a weekend but overall, I would say solid six. Above yeah. average, it was fine. It didn't piss me off. I feel as far as sequels to movies that are very, you know, 30 years, 35 years, whatever it is, I feel like it didn't it didn't do anything to hurt it, but also didn't advance it that much. It should make money. It was only a $100 million budget. 
and yeah, it's projected smart, to have a, a good weekend. So maybe we'll see a Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'm not allowed to say it, right? So the third one. And <laughs> But if you would have told me as a kid that I would be getting Michael Keaton's Batman and Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice back 30 some odd years later in two sequels to their respected franchises in like a two year period, I would have told you you're absolutely fucking crazy. Get out of here. I feel like, I feel like this movie is way better than the flash was for Batman. Yes. hundred percent. The flash was a really a Batman movie that unfortunately the flash spent way too much time in. Yeah. Uh, the flash was a gigantic bloated piece of shit. I feel like this movie could have been something special if it, did a few things differently, tweaked a little, tweaked a couple things here and there. Yeah. But overall, it was I I appreciate the fact that Michael Keaton came back to do Beetlejuice and slipped right back into the role the same way he did for Batman in the Flash. But like I said, this movie wasn't a bloated piece of fucking dog shit like the Flash was. So there's a, there's a, there's a few really good things about this movie, but I feel like it could have been a lot better. Totally. You know what I mean? I don't want to say I don't appreciate the original enough to to really have that nostalgia button that was smashed. Like that like and subscribe button down there. If you haven't done that, make sure you push that one. Um, it was a gr- it was a good movie. It was a good time. It, it was a good right. time. It was a good time, but I I didn't expect it to be the lightning in the bottle that the original was. It, it would be unrealistic to think that it would hit that level. Right. It was fine. It, it, it wasn't was, great. It wasn't awful. It was, right. it was fun. It was right. If you like Beetlejuice, you're going to like this movie. I feel like if you didn't really grow up with Beetlejuice, or you're not like in our age group. You might not right. appreciate it the way that someone that would have all the nostalgia for it would. Right. But yeah, like overall, Josh, it's a Josh good time. came out of it loving it because he, he loved the original growing up. So like, yeah, Josh wanted to shut the fuck up in the movie, though. Jesus Christ, man. Yo, Leo, it's showtime. Yo, the, the Beetlejuice baby's going to come back. <laughs> it's showtime it's showtime that was Beetlejuice Beetlejuice overall I think it was fine I think it hit all the beats that it needed to could have been better but like I said I do appreciate that this movie even exists because did you know so this movie's been what 35 36 years there was a rumor going around for like 20 years that the original sequel was supposed to be Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian what <laughs> I'm not kidding it was supposed to be a sequel with him in Hawaii or him going Hawaiian or something. <laughs> you know, part of me would enjoy seeing Gothic Lydia Dietz in like floral print, but like finding a black one. And like... <laughs> so at least we didn't get Beetlejuice goes Hawaiian. And I think this movie fits right into the spiel of the original. So yeah, you know what? I'll take this Good for over you. Hawaiian. Yeah. I would have taken Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian as like every now and again I want to watch Batman and Robin for the train wreck where I feel like it would have been an absolute fucking train wreck. But in the grand scheme of things, it would have been awful. <laughs> do you do you think they'll make another one? No. I think they might, man. I think if this movie makes money, they kind of left it open where there could be something. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if they did. It was It was not one of those movies that I would go and see again. It doesn't have that rewatchability factor where it's like i have to go and see that again there was so much that i missed yeah but you don't think about this how many fucking jurassic parks and fast and furious movies have there been those movies are fucking mostly god awful they make money and they keep churning them out yeah but i mean that's only because they've got ludicrous under like a 12 movie contract and they (laughs) they signed it back in the stone age when jurassic park actually first existed (laughs) fast and the furious jurassic stone agery is is going to be their next (laughs) fly through a time portal and and end up in in the stone age movie so I would, actually already, watch, they, I would actually watch that, to be honest they, with you. They went to space, and if they went to the Stone Age, I might watch it for the curio- for the curiosity. Wait, they went to space is, is real? I thought that, like, I've heard no, people say I'm, that, and I thought that was a joke. No, they went to space. We're not out of space! Ridiculous, they went to space. This is crazy, bro! How the fuck do you race cars in space? Exactly. They went to space. <laughs> <laughs> anyway that was beetlejuice <laughs> so that was beetlejuice beetlejuice want to thank you guys for hanging out with leo and i for a little bit checking out the video like share comment subscribe all that good youtube stuff and until the next one guys later beetlejuice 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 ah! Ah!